Hi, it's Maggie the Irish Gypsy here to bring you your April 2019 mid-month general readings. We're looking at the last half of April here. Thanks to everyone joining us here today. Welcome to any newcomers or first timers and welcome back to any followers and subscribers. Uh, thanks to those of you who take the time to tune into this channel and to follow, like, share and subscribe. And a big thank you to all of my clients out there, regular and new clients for keeping me so busy with personal readings. Uh, and as usual, if any of you are interested in a personal one-on-one -on -one reading with me live or recorded, you can get more info and contact details by clicking on the description link below or going to my YouTube channel's homepage and clicking on that about button. <clears throat> you can feel free to email me directly at maggie, the number one mcguire at gmail.com. I'd be delighted to work with you. Uh, I do readings full time, five to six days a week. It is all that I do. So I can usually respond to your initial request within the same day or the first 24 hours with more info. And setting up a reading is pretty good too. Since I do this full time, I'm pretty diligent at working with people's schedules to get them readings as quickly as possible. And I do a wide variety of readings in all areas of life, of all different types and lengths and costs. So it's a few things to different things to choose from if you're interested. Just send me an email and we'll go from there. All right, let's move right into this reading. This is for the fire sign of Aries for the last half of April 2019. Let's see what's in store for our beautiful Rams. Aries, the last half of April 2019. Remember that general readings always play out a little differently, resonate a little differently for everybody watching. So if you know your rising sign, your moon sign, your Venus sign, watch those videos as well. Okay, Aries. <clears throat> All right, Aries, we begin around the middle of the month, third week or so, with the Nine of Cups, followed by the Eight of Wands. Around the last week, at or towards the end of April, we have the Eight of Swords and the Devil. That's not a combination I like to see. From the bottom of the deck, the overall energy and guidance and advice for the last half of April is Justice. So it's about doing the right thing, the karmically right thing, the fair thing. What is the right thing to do? That's the overall energy and advice, regardless of how this situation resonates for you. Uh, justice is the reap what we sow card. What we put into something is directly reflected in the outcome. So the cautionary advice with uh, justice is to operate with as much transparency, openness, honest, honesty as possible. Uh, doing the right thing, knowing what the right thing is, knowing what your truth is and doing that and sticking to that and being honest and open about that as well. The ethical thing. We have the Nine of Cups and the Eight of Wands. Now the Nine of Cups is, you know, often traditionally the, you know, kind of the lottery card, the wish fulfillment, the your cups overflowing with abundance. It can also represent you know, partying, enjoying yourself, having a good time with uh, yourself and friends, family, uh, getting what you want. It is clarified by the uh, Eight of Wands, which is a card about conversation, communications, could be online communication, face-to-face -face communication. It's a lot of conversations and communication. Now, for some of you, um, for some of you, for some reason, I'm getting this message, be careful of what you say when you're drinking. Uh, or under the influence of something. Be careful of any, it kind of goes without saying, but um, it must mean something to somebody because I'm getting this conversation. Be careful about your conversations and your communications, particularly with anyone you may be involved in a relationship with while you're drinking or enjoying yourself or having a good time because I feel like for some of you, it, there's a chance it could go awry somehow. Some of you, there's something you definitely, Some of you may be involved, I mean, this I think would be for a very small portion of you. You may be getting news or information that's good news or information. It might be about a legal issue or a legal case. You may be getting um, uh, some nice settlement or a decision in your favor, and that is, in fact, what you are celebrating. But I, I, I am still getting this very strong message that you need to be careful about what you say or, or how you say it uh, when you're out socializing, when you're at a party, when you're out drinking, when you're out having a good time, when you're being with other people. You need to kind of be careful about your communication and your words. And also for some of you, I'm also getting that you need to be, 
you need to be very you need to be very direct and very clear with what it is that you need to make yourself happy in life. The Nine of Cups is is the wish fulfillment card, but it, it's in more of a physical, decadent sort of uh, external way than say the Ten of Cups, which is complete fulfillment and achievement, but it has more to do with our emotional and spiritual happiness. That's why it's called the Happy Home card. This is also a card of, of happiness, but not um, so much on an internal spiritual you know, a happy home, a happily ever after sense. It's more in a, you know, I have more than enough to eat, more than enough to drink. I have everything that I want in my external life and that's what I'm kind of enjoying. There's also a bit of cautionary advice in the Nine of Cups of being careful what you wish for because you may get it and find that it's not everything it's cut out to be because there's less of an emotional and spiritual connection in this getting what you want than in the next card, the Ten of Cups, which is the achievement of that emotional and spiritual harmony. So it's about maybe being very clear and direct, I think, for some of you. Um, and that kind of goes along with justice too, speaking your truth and acting your truth too, and being as open and honest and transparent about what you need to make yourself happy as possible. For some of you, I'm also getting, okay, this is a very strong message I'm getting, um, that you need to be very, some of you may be in a relationship that you feel maybe stuck or trapped in, but there's still this emotional connection but you're not wanting maybe the same things or the same depth, the same level of commitment as they are. And you need to be honest about the life that you actually want. You may not want so much of a, a deep, committed responsibility, obligation kind of relationship. Um, you may be afraid of telling the other person and being open and honest with the fact that it is the Nine of Cups that you want. You don't, you don't think too much about the Ten of Cups and that's okay. It's about being honest about who we are so that we don't end up deceiving a person that we're with or maybe getting to know um, and then finding out that we don't want the same things but then not wanting to let go because we're kind of invested in that person. Uh, however, whichever one of these messages resonates to you, the fundamental energy areas is, is about being open, honest, direct, and truthful with what it is you really want to be happy in your life. Now, at or towards the end of April, we have the Eight of Swords and the Devil, which is never a combination I like to see for anybody in any situation because the Eight of Swords represents feeling trapped, held hostage, but it's it's in your head, meaning that the source, the source of your concern, uh, the subject, the thing that might be keeping you trapped might be valid or your fears or concerns might be valid, but the Eight of Swords usually comes up when you feel trapped and held hostage or that you can't remove yourself or you don't have the power to make a situation better or leave it if it can't um, because of you know fill in the blank because I have these obligations because there's all this time I put into it you know whether it's a relationship or a job or something I'm not happy but I don't feel I can leave because I can't get anything better or you know this is just the way that it is swords is air energy it's about what goes on up in our heads thoughts truth insight how we look at things belief systems and that's what's actually keeping you trapped not the reality of the situation now what clarifies that is the devil, which speaks of feeling, again, sort of like this, the devil speaks of feeling chained to something or addicted to something. It can sometimes represent addiction. Some of you, because we have the Eight of Swords, the devil, and the Nine of Cups, some of this might be an alcohol or drug addiction. Um, you may, somebody may be talking to you about this or you might be talking to somebody you know close or significant to you about a drug or alcohol addiction or uh, this can also represent negative and toxic relationships codependency or feeling you know just trapped and enslaved and enchained like you can't break free from this it's a it's a it's a combination that says that you feel like you can't leave the situation or transform the situation uh, and because it's a general reading and it's for many of you some of you this might be a relationship that you feel a person you might feel addicted to or, or trapped in that you can't leave but you can't be honest either um, maybe you're having difficulty maybe you just don't maybe you don't want you know the happy home marriage sort of thing but you're afraid of being open and honest with that because you really care about this person you're really connected to this person but you're, for some reason, you're not telling them how you really feel about what you want. Um, some of you, it might be a drug or alcohol or, you know, a sort of thing as well. Uh, again, the same thing. It looks like you feel like you're, you can't either transform a situation or remove yourself from it. 
and you're not being completely, I think, open and honest about what it is that you need. Now, for those of you who are dealing with a substance abuse issue or someone close to you is, you may, again, not be talking to them about it or confronting them because you're just afraid to talk to them about it or confront them for, you know, fill in the gap. Again, it's kind of difficult because I'm getting like all of these different messages and it's going to resonate. Each one of them is going to resonate to different people who are watching here. So fundamentally, it comes back to the same thing. You feel you can't, but spirit is saying that you can. And your underlying advice here is about try to put the emotions on the, you know, on the bottom shelf for just a minute and ask yourself, what is really the right thing to do here? The right, the ethical, the true, staying true to, you know, what I know to be right. What is that to do? What is, what is, what do I need to do that is the right thing to do here? And stop feeling like you can't free yourself from the situation and you can't speak the truth um, because you can. Spirit is asking you to do that. Let's pull a clarifying card for or two for this eight of swords the devil energy oh oh my goodness the lovers and the two of cups this is very similar to i think it was leo's reading which i did like four readings ago um only there wasn't so much the sense of feeling you know addicted to or trapped so much so what is this Eight of Swords and the Devil about? It's about the lovers and the Two of Cups. It's about needing to make an important relationship decision about somebody that you feel is your soulmate, which is maybe why you feel like you're actually addicted to this person or um, you know, you're know, you really tied into this person and you can't be completely open and honest about the fact that you don't want exactly the same things because you really, really, really want them in your life. The thing is, is the soulmate situation, I mean, if you both are ultimately, if this is a relationship reading for some of you, and I think it probably is for many of you, although for others of you, it could be a different kind of relationship or job, work, or career, or a legal situation. Again, it's about what do I do in this situation because I don't feel like I can do anything, but you're being asked to be completely open and honest. If this, if this person really is your soulmate, then you would want the same relationship goals eventually. So you need to be open and honest with about with what it is that you need to make yourself happy. And because the right thing to do is to be open and honest, even if you feel like your truth is going to hurt another person. I mean, we don't want to be mean about our truth. We want to say it in as compassionate a way as possible, but we need to be, we need to speak our truth. And I believe that's what you're being called to here. But the difficulty is that you're connected with someone, you really care about them. Maybe you have a lot of time and emotion invested in them and you just, you're afraid if you do, then you will lose. And so you feel like you're caught, you're trapped in this in-between place. It's a tricky and challenging situation, Aries. And because it looks so challenging, let's, let's pull a couple of one or two more additional advice cards. What does Aries do here? The Page of Swords and the Nine of Pentacles. The Page of Swords, it's speaking your truth even, the Page of Swords is kind of that young, unsure sort of energy, but it's swords, it's, it's you know, belief systems, it's truth, it's enlightenment. The Page of Swords can sometimes, it's interesting because you have justice here too in the upright, the Page of Swords can sometimes represent finding yourself in a situation where you feel ethically or morally challenged or the situation you're in is calling up your you're in almost a moral or ethical dilemma. What do I do? And it is about speaking the truth. Even if you feel like this page, even if you're, what is that song? You know, say what you need to say. Even if your voice is shaking, even if you're scared, it's about speaking the truth because that's the right thing to do. Even if you feel that truth may hurt someone that you care about very much. I mean, try to do it as compassionately as possible. And then the clarifier is the nine of pentacles, which is a card of independent self-sufficiency, self-empowerment you know, loving who you are, loving your independence, whether you're in a relationship or not, and loving that sense of being kind of free and independent in yourself. To me, Aries, it looks very much like many of you may be involved in a romantic relationship with someone that you love, that you really care about this person. Um, you feel like maybe they want a deeper sort of commitment or more of a commitment to a future, and you're just don't want to look at that or you're you're happy with things the way that they are but they're pushing or wanting something more something deeper and 
you're afraid if you say look that's not I don't want to leave you I love you and this relationship is good but I'm not I don't want to go to that place or I'm not ready to look at that place but I don't want us to break up either and I feel like you feel like you can't say that and so you're keeping yourself trapped in this kind of very uncomfortable difficult spot because you're afraid of what speaking your truth will mean but it means you're also kind of unhappy in the place that you're in now you can translate this into a romantic relationship I suppose you could do it in a job or career path too where you're unhappy in a job but you're afraid to speak up about it because they might fire you you know or something of that sort but spirit is saying always always this is it's very clear here that it's about speaking the truth say it as openly directly and honestly as possible temper it with as much compassion as you can because it looks like you obviously are emotionally invested in this but it's about speaking your truth Aries really kind of it's similar to Leo's maybe it's a fire sign thing for the last half of April not exactly the same um, but kind of similar Well, Aries, uh, I wish you all the strength, love, and blessings in this, uh, and and stay true to yourself. Be as loving and compassionate as you can, but but speak your truth. So, Aries, I hope uh, I often say I hope you enjoyed this reading. I, I I always do, but some readings, you know, come out very challenging. It's not all you know unicorns and bunny rabbits, and that's just the way that it is. But I hope that I hope that you find it helpful and useful. Um, Again, if any of you would like a more personal one-on-one -on -one reading with me, particularly if, if this reading or any of my readings resonate with you, uh, just click on the description link below or click on the little about button on my YouTube channel's homepage. You can email me directly at Maggie, the number one McGuire at gmail.com. I would be delighted to work with you uh, and set up a reading as uh, in as timely a fashion as possible. Uh, I do love and romance, of course, compatibility charting, career work and finance, investment readings. Uh, gift readings. I also do six and 12 month overviews that take a look at what's coming in all the main areas of, of life over a six or 12 month period, depending on how far ahead you want to look. Uh, so a variety of different things to choose from. You can also find me on the smartphone app Instant Go under Irish Gypsy. That link is also provided and that's really good for quick answers to the quick easier questions. Uh, for a more intensive or complicated issue, uh, a more traditional reading is probably best but a few things to choose from. So Aries, I will see you all again in a couple of weeks for the May 2019 general readings. Until then, as always, I wish you joy, peace, blessings, strength, and a happy life. And uh, I hope to see you again here soon. Take care. Bye-bye.